this is Mary over here at Images on the Page, and today I'm going to be doing another review. So I recently listened to Static by L.A. Witt on audiobook, and I just kind of wanted to share my thoughts. Um, so I'm still kind of unsure how to rate this book. I did really enjoy it, but I was very... Uncomfortable isn't the right word, but very just wary in the beginning. So the premise of the book is it follows Alex, who is gender fluid, but in this world, they are actually able to change, like physically change their genders depending on how they are mentally feeling. So if Alex is feeling more feminine, they can uh, change their body to be feminine. If they're be feeling more masculine, they can change their body to be masculine. Alex does have a boyfriend, of which they've been together for two years, and he only knows Alex as a she. They're called shifters in this world, and he had no idea. Well, one day he shows up at Alex's apartment because he hasn't heard from her, and he finds a guy there. Well... Alex was forced to get this inhibitor placed in their back, which forced them to be what is called static, where they can't shift from one gender to the other. Um, and it just kind of starts this whole process of them kind of deciding that they're worth the fight. Um, their parents are the ones who forced the inhibitor surgery on them, um, not consensually at all. And so it's about them kind of regaining some of their agency and standing up for themselves, but also their boyfriend, who I've forgotten his name, completely forgotten his name, Ben? Damon. <laughs> Damon's the boyfriend's name. But it's also about Damon kind of trying to figure out how the relationship is going to progress as well. I thought it was really interesting because it is told from dual perspectives. It is told from Alex's perspective and Damon's perspective on alternating chapters. So you do kind of get to see both sides of it. I do think Alex's body dysphoria was handled very well. Um, from what I could tell, L.A. Witt is not queer or gender non-conforming um, from what it seems like, but I don't know. It's just not stated. It's entirely possible that... Um, she is, but, um, but I do think it was handled actually fairly well from someone who does deal with some body dysphoria and not really fit, feeling like they always fit the gender they show. Um, I felt like it was fairly accurate and I thought how Damon, the author handled Damon's character coming to grips with their significant coming to grips with his significant other being a shifter and being able to be both genders was very fairly well done I mean so but like I said I'm not quite sure there's moments where it was kind of like especially right in the beginning it was a lot of showing not telling it's the first chapters told from Damon's perspective about him worrying about Alex because he hasn't heard from her in like the whole weekend and he knew that she was going to visit her parents and I just want to say here the reason I keep switching pronouns is because that is how Damon thought of her especially when because when Alex is a she she's referred to as she and when Alex is a he or when Alex is a female she prefers to be referred to as she and then when Alex is a male refers to be referred to as he um so when just talking about them generally I just say they um because they're a fictional character so I don't know exactly what they are in this moment in time if that makes sense um but so he is very concerned about her and it's just a lot about like explanations about how they are in the past and how they react certain times and how they just it's just like telling us how Alex can be instead of us getting to see how they can be 
um, which I feel like is necessary because we're coming into it, into a already established relationship. But there are times that happens later in the book where they are, where it is shown more um, how Alex can react in certain situations because of certain things. And I think that was much better than Damon just kind of telling us that, you know, sometimes she doesn't like to be touched and sometimes she can't talk for days or, you know, stuff like that. And so sometimes they're fine being touched and it was just, I don't know. I am, like I said, I'm very unsure on how I feel about this because I do think for the most part it was well done. Um, the beginning just kind of made me really worry. There was also some times where it was like, she's not like other girls type of thing, which I'm not a big fan of because that's really demeaning to every other girl. And so, but I would recommend it. I do really want to um, put warning labels out for, or trigger warnings out for body dysphoria, anxiety, depression, um, alcohol abuse and non-consensual medical procedures. Um, so just be careful going into it. It does deal with Alex being static in one body and being, of course, very upset by this because they are used to being able to shift depending on how they're feeling um, inside, like depending on the gender they feel or the sex they feel. And so but I did really like it. And I kind of read this right after I read I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver and comparing it to an own voices non-binary character to kind of a, as far as I know, not own voices binary character. I do think that it was done fairly well and I, there wasn't too many very glaring, very upsetting, or well, there wasn't, there wasn't any very upsetting things that were completely incorrect. Um, so I think L.A. Witt did the research well. If you have read this book, please feel free to comment down below. I would love to know what you thought, even if it's saying that I'm a complete idiot and completely disagreeing with me. Um, feel free, I love to have discussions about book, which is why I have a booktube channel. Booktube channel. If you, just based on my description, what did you think about the book? always just stop in and say hi. I always love to hear from everyone. Love to know that you guys are here. And until the next video, ta-ta for now.